On number 11, you're going to need to graph either a tangent or a cotangent. So first we'll start with a, a tangent. For the tangent graph, it's only going to ask you for the period and the phase shift. Remember that on tangent and cotangent, there's no amplitude. So just period and phase shift. All right, now your period is going to be the formula you're using. It's pi divided by b, where b is a number in front of the x. So it's going to be uh, pi over 4 is what we're going to put in here. So we're going to do pi divided by pi over 4. And if we flip and multiply, the pi's are going to cancel. And we get a whole number for this example. We get a 4 for the period. Next, we want to find the phase shift. Now, the phase shift for both tangent and cotangent is going to be C over B. This is your B in front of the X, and the C would be the number that comes after the X. But for this particular example, there's no plus or minus here, which means that there, the C value is 0. So we have 0 over pi over 4, and that means that the phase shift is 0. Now, for tangent graphs, this is the second key point for tangent graphs. So when you find the phase shift, that's your second key point. If you're looking at the cotangent graph, the phase shift is actually the first key point, and it gives you actually the first vertical asymptote that you have. But for tangent, it's different. For tangent, the phase shift is always the second key point. Now, in order to find the other key points, we want to find the half point. So even though it's not going to ask for that, we'll go do that, do that here. So the half point is your period divided by 2. Okay, The period here is 4. So in this case, we have 4 over 2, which equals 2. So that's going to be our half point. So period is 4, the phase shift is 0, and the half point is 2. So now we're going to put all this together uh, and do the graph. So we're going to make a number line, remembering that our phase shift is the second key point. So erase this, and then now we'll take a look at the, the graph. Okay, so the number line we have here, remember that the phase shift is your second key point. So we're, there's going to be one to the left of that, and then there's going to be the other ones that go to the right of the key point. So zero is here, that's your first key point. We'll go ahead and put in the vertical axis as well, right there. Now your half point was two. So to get the other key points, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna subtract two to get this one, and then we're gonna keep adding two to get these. So zero subtract two is gonna give you negative two, 0 plus 2 is going to give you 2. 2 plus the half point again. 2 plus 2 will give you 4. That's the next key point. And then 4 plus 2, so we're adding the half point again there, is going to give you 6. So that's going to be all of your key points. The first key point, the third key point, and the fifth key point those are the ones that get the vertical asymptotes. Now normally, the tangent graph is going to rise as you go from left to right. So normally it goes this direction. However, we see here that we have a negative. The negative is going to flip the graph, and it's actually going to make it fall instead. So the graph is actually going to be doing this kind of motion. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are no amplitudes on a graph like this, but the points that it would cross is right here. This would be at 1, and this is at negative 1 down below. Halfway between here, between 0 and negative 2, right here, the graph is going to hit that point because technically there's a 1 here in front of that negative, or wrapped right the negative. So there's a 1 here, and there's another 1 down below, so the graph is going to look like this. Again, the reason why it's going in this direction is because the negative sign that you have out front, normally it would, would have gone the other direction. Between 2 and 4, at that point, 
the graph's going to hit one up here. And between four and six, it's going to hit one down below right there. So then this portion is going to look like this. Okay, so right there now, that would be your completed graph. It does say graph it over two periods. This is actually the reason why you want to find a total of five key points, because that's automatically going to give you the two periods that you need. Between negative two and two, that's a distance of four. Between two and six, it's a distance of four. So that confirms our period is four that we found out earlier.